which you could override it. Same thing here, okay? But just to finish this local control, we did one, again, where we, and the one in the picture there is kind of like that, where you have low O2, high CO2, a corresponding high O2, low CO2. And now we're talking about the pulmonary arterioles. As they pass through the lungs very quickly, where they want to go. And their job is to pick up, okay? They want to pick up as much oxygen as they can to deliver to the body, and they, they only got, you know, a second to do it. And if you got paid for, you know, how much you picked up, which one would you go to? Would you go to this one or this one? Mm -hmm. So this is the opposite in response to these gases. This is going to vasoconstrict. And this is going to vasodilate, okay, which is the opposite of what we just saw here to those gases. Again, it, it should make sense to us overall that, you know, if we want to pick up oxygen, we're going to pick up where, where the oxygen is which is over here. The, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the definition, as far as when you look at the figure, and the more official way of looking at it, is ventilation matches perfusion. Let me just write that. And then we'll look at that problem. Matches perfusion. So that in this case, per, ventilation is how much air got into the alveoli. Okay, so not that much air got in, a lot of air got that in. Perfusion is how much oxygen gets to the blood, and so it's going to match. If we put little, if we only put a little ventilation in here, you know, it, it constricts, so there's only a little bit of perfusion. If we put more oxygen in here, it dilates so that we have more perfusion of the oxygen to the blood. It's going to match. We want these things to match. Because uh, that's our job is to sort of maximize, you know, what we're picking up in the lungs. We don't need to go places that we don't want to go. We literally don't want to use parts of our lungs unless we need them. So we'll have these constricted. These will constrict. All the blood will be directed from to where we want it to be. Okay. Now to do that problem, and there's going to be the, you know almost an identical problem, you know, on the test, except I'm going to change the answers a bit because I have like. I had to go through true false ones on that, and I only want one answer. Um, to do that problem, if you have to use the following reasoning. You need to know this, and then you need, and again, I'm going to I put this up, but I'll put it up again. You need to, to know what's going to cause, because I, I, what I did is, if you look at the language of the question, I applied a drug to a bronchial that must have done one of these two things. I applied a drug to this bronchial. Let's say we don't know what's going on here. We're, we're basically back in the beginning. And I apply a drug to this, this bronchial. And I'm not telling you directly what this drug did, but what I'm saying is, as a result of this drug, the pulmonary arterioles constricted. Okay? The pulmonary arterioles constricted as it went by. Okay, does everyone get the basic idea? So now, would you, would, the next thing, what, what I want you in your mind is, okay, that drug did one of two things. The drug must have either bronchioconstricted this or bronchiodilated this. Um, bronchioconstricted. Okay. If this constricted, okay, what, what must be in here? A lot of O2 or little O2? Little O2. Mm -hmm. So what did this drug do? That would be a lot of O2. This it's going to constrict the bronchial. constriction of the bronchial. Therefore, low O2, therefore, that's why that constricted. Remember, we just said low O2 here will cause that to constrict it. Mm -hmm. I applied a drug that caused this to constrict. Therefore, the drug must have constricted so that I have low O2, high CO2. Okay? okay? Again, if you follow the first part, that when this is low, this is going to constrict. Mm -hmm. Okay? I said I apply a drug, this constricted, Therefore, this must be low. The only way you're going to you know, have a low is if you constrict this bronchial so there's less oxygen in and the CO2 is out. If I dilated this, there'd be more oxygen and this thing would have done what? Dilated. Dilated. So you apply the drug and this was the effect. Therefore, you know the drug bronchial constriction. That was my reasoning on that. Does that make sense? If you know, it's just going one step backwards. Okay. 
you gotta you gotta know that. And but one of the answers was the cause. You know, C was the cause bronchoconstriction. You're like, sweet, that's an easy question. Stop there, Mike. But I you am. Know, oh, yeah. So the, to answer the other parts, I want you to go through each one and say which one. You know, is it totally true, totally false? To do that, you, and you will have to know this. We go back to the middle of chapter 17, and we have the things which cause bronchoconstriction and bronchodilation. Okay, for bronchoconstriction. What part of the nervous system innervates cause bronchial constriction? Parasympathetic. Parasympathetic. And so, you know, parasympathetic, and we need to know the guys. What was the neurotransmitter? ACTH. And muscarinic. Muscarinic. That's why I can use muscarinic antagonist agonist, okay? And the other one was histamine. Histamine. Histamine just uses histamine receptors, but I could use antagonist or, or agonist for that. For, for bronchodilation, did the sympathetic innervate this baby? But <laughs> epinephrine. So we had adrenaline, epinephrine, and it binds to beta two, beta two. Beta two. receptors. I think the so you can have beta two beta agonist and antagonist. Okay. So the key is you have bronch. You basically know it's going to cause bronchial constriction. Mm -hmm. Or well, now you know. Well, now we know. What says it in here? Well, and oh, considering no. I won't change much of that, frankly, it would be pretty much like that. It's going to cause bronchoconstriction. So now you look through the answers and see which, you know, is it true or false? And, and the, the first part is what? Wait, I do have it here so I can sort of read it. Okay, so the first statement is, and again, remember when I have two parts, <laughs> you know, to above it, right, you know, true, 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 false, whatever it is. So it says, the reagent was a beta-2 antagonist. Would that be consistent? Okay. When epinephrine binds to beta-2, it causes what? Okay. What would an antagonist do? Constriction. So that part's true. Okay. The second part says, resulting in a decreased levels of carbon dioxide. Nope. I There's assume. an increase. Okay? So that made that statement false. Mm -hmm. The first part was true, the second part was farce. False. Okay? It was a farce. Pult it was a farce. farce. <laughs> it's a pult farce. <laughs> okay? Yes? Yes. yes. Alright. So, I mean, all together that would be a, a false statement. The reagent may have been a muscarinic receptor agonist. Would that work? Yes. Right? Yeah. An agonist does the same thing. Boom. Bronchial constriction. And, uh, and subsequent vasoconstriction, uh, let's see, where, uh, where am I? B. Okay, uh, resulting in decreased levels of oxygen. Yeah, yeah. true. Yes, mm -hmm. that's a true statement. Okay, the drug may have caused bronchial constriction. True. Yes. If life were just that easy, true. <laughs> okay, application of histamine would reverse the observed effect. False. No. Histamine, would, you would want a histamine antagonist, mm -hmm. which are out there on the market somewhere. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. So, this question's on there. 